All right, guys, how's everybody doing? We have a new episode of Evening with Filmmaker, and today our guest is a Miss Danielle Lopez. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Danielle. Hi, everyone. My name is Danielle Lopez. I'm so stoked to be here. I'm super excited. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's, it's been a while since we last spoke. It's good to hear from you. And how, how have you been? I know. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It, it has been a minute, like uh, at our time at uh, ASU. It's like, wow, we graduated like two years ago. I was like, where did the time go? But yeah. <laughs> I'm doing well. I hope I hope you guys are uh, doing well and staying safe and everyone's doing good. Yeah, no, as good as we can be. So wait, are we all from the same ASU year? Oh, uh, we are, I think. Oh, wow, well, look at that. Yeah, I guess I, I, <laughs> I don't think I had any classes with you, Danielle. I don't think so either. I was like, the voice kind of sounds familiar, but yeah. Ah, uh, maybe ASU you've seen my work. Like, <laughs> uh, one thing we did we rewatched your short film oh snap so uh could you tell us a little bit about that like how what inspired the idea and it it seemed kind of like music video aspect like, yeah movie? yeah what inspired yeah. that decision oh my gosh i was like thank you guys for watching it yeah it was uh my senior uh capstone at asu uh, uh and i personally struggle a lot with like uh, uh anxiety and um, someone I was talking to from my theater group, uh, they really encouraged like grounding techniques and using the five senses uh, of like sight, sound, taste and touch. So my friends and I were kind of discussing, you know, how would that look if a character um, was having a hard time living in the moment? And then what would happen if uh, their senses kind of thrust them into these like vignettes where they were forced to experience the moment. You didn't have to like talk or think, just very reactive and, and being present. And we were really excited to kind of explore what that looked like. Mm, okay. Wow, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, you guys did a really good job with it. Yeah, that, that couldn't have been your first short film, right? That, it was, <laughs> it was technically my second. Okay. Um, yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you for for watching it. I, it was it's yeah. so nerve wracking, yeah. Because to get into the program, I uh, used uh, a smaller uh, film that I did, but that was like a stock motion project, okay. um, and a, it was just all music based. And then to and then we spent all this time preparing, and then I've done more stock motion stuff, but never been like brave enough to like kind of come together and like do this whole like production, oh. like shoot so when they told us like capstone i was like wow like that's a lot of pressure yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. like but it was a lot of fun to make and yeah nick uh nick was there and in the art gallery he's i don't know if you saw him he's one of the extras oh he, uh, he like, made sure i saw <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's it's such like uh this is a supportive like creative atmosphere like you really can't make anything by yourself i i feel like if you really want it to be great so like it, it took a lot of collaboration a lot of like patience and time and planning and i was really thankful like everybody at asu who helped out with with that i couldn't have done it like without everybody's support yeah that was actually this kind of ties into one of my questions i had on this um was there like any problems you guys ran into uh during that production because there were a lot of different locations and different um props the the door in the bar and in that uh green grassway place so did you run into any like hardships we did my uh producer uh producers christopher melendrez and olivia chapel they were rock stars but yeah we were like going back and forth between locations of like the art gallery or mm. getting approval from the artists, what art could be shown in the back shots. Cause those are students works uh. as well for their artistic uh, capstones or paintings. And then, um, you know, with props, like what could we borrow? What could we buy? What could we make? <laughs> like mm. making things, you know, the week before days uh. before, or, um, you know, getting things loaned and, yeah, there were a couple of hiccups like that and kind of substitutes that we made, but we were like, we kind of rolled with it and we we're like, wow, that looks a lot better than we <laughs> thought it would be. So, um, yeah, just embracing those like little hiccups because, yeah, I'll, we definitely ran into those. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I think it's 
rare, maybe impossible to find a production that doesn't have something go wrong at some right. point, you know? <laughs> I think it just comes with the craft, honestly. <laughs> um, but did, uh, did production of that short film specifically uh, fall into the pandemic or did, were you done filming by then? Oh, we were done filming by then. Unfortunately, uh, well, it, it's for, more fortunately than unfortunately, but uh, we were all like uh, wrapped and we had all our footage. And then when the pandemic hit, uh, we had to do like all our classes virtually. So mm-hmm. the editors had like our footage and then we would all go through like Zoom uh, virtual classes and talking about like the cuts or trying to like meet up virtually or schedule meetings about like the sound work or the post-production and how like the trying to condense it like and then submit it virtually for the capstone viewing so that was like really crazy so i can't imagine what students were experiencing having to try to film during the pandemic Mm. that was so we we lucked out on at least getting our footage um with with our editor by that point yeah that is lucky that yeah, everyone knows by now pandemic came out of nowhere and screwed mm-hmm. everything up for everyone. So that that is a silver lining for you guys then, I guess. Definitely. So what have you what have you been doing since since Oh Snap? Any other short films? I know um you and Moses are working on As the Day Goes By. Could you tell us anything about that or Yeah, so uh, Moses uh Lavi, we uh we did our capstones together and he was in the directing track and he is so talented. He oh, yeah. is just like an idea machine and he can work with, so well with a camera. And once he has a vision, like I, he, he is so passionate about like filmmaking. So he's, he's a really, really great guy to collaborate with. Um, so yeah, we started writing as the day goes by, I think back in 2019, um, he came wow. to me with this idea and uh, it was originally just like, oh, like, you know, do, would you mind reading a couple of pages that I've written so far? And like, yeah, definitely. Like, uh, and then it kind of evolved to what if, what if the character said this or how would we make that work? Or, you know, do you have any ideas or how would you how would you write that? And um, it, it, he was he really trusted me to kind of um, input different ideas or we would read things together. Um, and it really just kind of blossomed into like hey let's like co-write it together Mm -hmm. um but yeah all the story is by him and uh he's just he's a really really great uh creative creative artist and i saw that he's like crowdfunding for the film which is really really exciting and he told me that he was going to submit it to different um screenwriting competitions and things like that smart yeah. yeah yeah i was like oh that that's cool and then I was like, you know, let me know what happens. <laughs> and then I was I was uh, looking at the crowdfunding website and I found that it, it got like three different accolades. And I was like, Moses, wow. what is this? And he was like, oh, I didn't tell you. I was like, <laughs> no. So I text him at like 11 o'clock. I was like, what is this? I was like, you still kept my name on it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was, he's like, absolutely. So it, it was really cool. Um, we, I didn't think he was like shopping it around as much as he was, but mm-hmm. um, he submitted it to the, the Los Angeles International Screenplay, uh, the summer 2022 20, division, because we were like working on it for months and then we would stop and then we would do stuff more virtually and then we would think we were locked and then we would write some more. Mm-hmm. So it, it was a process, but... Uh, it made it to the the finalist round, so it was like that was really really cool. Um, but I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. That's what's up. That's really cool. Um, Thank you. Is this a short or feature film? So it's a it's a short film. Um, it's about eighteen pages. Um, I know it's a little longer than a short, but uh, he he's really like wanting to to have it like uh, a short film. Uh, he's like, I really want to focus on like condensing this story in a in a very short uh, way and format. And I was like, Yeah, like I'm I'm down to roll with it. Like you know, let's try to see what we can do. And yeah, he's he's a really really good guy. He's super talented. Yeah, shout outs to Moses. Yeah, coming back to you for a second. 
Is writing your preferred uh, part of production or do you like directing more or yeah, what is your preferred role? So that's a really, really great question. I originally went to school for my theater degree. Um, when I went to ASU, I was supposed to just kind of finish, you know, my my theater arts. Uh, and then I saw the film stuff and I was like, I really want to learn about that. So then I did the directing track. Um, so I was able to finish, but I've tried to write for small theater um, productions before and then I directed theater productions. I think that I really, really love directing more uh and i wish uh i wish i i, I want to kind of push myself into that but i i do very much enjoy writing because i think that it, it's it's odd i think hearing what a character could say or like how the how the moment plays out and then coming from the theater um, background um flexing my muscles and like acting um or like uh performance arts I think that's kind of where the writing comes from because because I always think oh what if it's said that way or I it's like I hear something and like oh what it could you know get really heated or this conflict could roll out like that that but uh, I think uh, I think my heart's in directing um, but I really really enjoy writing as well okay so who are some of your um oh sorry who are some <laughs> of your your filmmaking and and theater uh, inspirations so I know that uh when I first started uh, at Scottsdale Community College, uh, well, I, first I was at Glen Oak Community College, and then I went to Scottsdale Community. I was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure myself out. And then I saw this poster at uh, advertising a conservatory for uh, Scottsdale um, Community College. And I met this instructor. Her name is uh, Evelyn Elaine Mo, but she goes by E.E. E. Mo. <laughs> and she, she is absolutely wonderful. She runs the Maga acting studio. Uh, she's my mentor. She's taught me so much about story. Uh, and then also focusing on like Stanislavski, like, you know, acting or Uta Hagen's, you know, method of acting. And, but um, I mean, as a film kid, like I love Wes Anderson, like Christopher Nolan um oh, yes. nice. yeah i really <laughs> we're like yeah um and then deborah chow i know that she's done like like the mandalorian and then the obi-wan kenobi things like that and i i really i think she's got like a great eye for action and just like cut and color and like so i i, I like a lot of stuff and but i love like old musicals too like 19 you know 50s musicals or west side story or like steven spielberg like so okay. a lot of like older stuff, vintage stuff, but contemporary stuff's really awesome too. Um, and yeah, Edgar Wright, really love him as a director as well. Do you see yourself going and making a musical in the future? Is that something you're interested in making or just something you like on the side? Oh my God, making a musical would be so much fun. Like yeah. it would be so much fun. I worked at the Phoenix Theater and I was the house manager. Uh, I wasn't doing anything creatively. I was just really facilitating like uh, the house operations and but having people come in the theater and then seeing how happy they were when they left. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my theater, my family and I would watch musicals there. And just to just to hear live theater and watch actors dance and the choreography and the singing, it's there's nothing like live theater, especially like live music. Mm -hmm. um, but to have it like captured in film when we have like the power of editing and like literally transporting somebody from like place to place. But yeah, I think a musical would be so much fun. Okay. Okay. Myself. <laughs> <sighs> I know I like a musical. Nick, what musical do I like? The Lion King. I like the Lion King. See, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> That's so funny you just said that. I I literally saw The Lion King at ASU Gamage. Oh, uh, really? How was yeah, that? It was amazing. My fiance, he got tickets for my birthday, and I was like, what? Because wow. that's, that's my favorite Disney film besides The Little Mermaid. But, mm -hmm. you know, you grew up with The Lion King. You know, I think like most of us did. We just grew up with that movie. And then seeing it, like it, at one point I cried, like, <laughs> but it was like in the dark theater. I was like, you know, wiping my eyes, like, <laughs> like I'm a 30 year old crying at this show, but it was like, it was so powerful. But I mean, the effects that they do and the 
intricate costuming of the puppetry and like what the like the choreography and how everything flows together. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I have never seen anything of the live action Lion King. Oh, you got to. You got to, bro. It's the best. Have I, you seen it? Oh, uh, Nick, you saw it too? I saw it. Not at not at ASU Gamage. I was, I think like three. It was me, my dad, and, and my older sister. And ever, like ever since that, we've always been like, yeah, one of these days we're going to go back and see it. And here we are like 20 years <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful. It is like it's, it's it's great. It's really good. Matter of fact, kind of kind of tangentially, Jake in in the Lion King too. Like when they're singing that first song, like he lives in you. Like uh. that was in. I don't know if it's in all of the the live action productions, but it oh. was it was in one of them though. From the second movie. Yeah, well, that's, that's what made me cry. That was the song that made me cry. That's the really? song right there, man. Yeah. Interesting. Is it still in the beginning of the play? Maybe it I was, haven't, haven't seen it in a long time. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the one the one I just saw, Nick. They saying that when he's explaining to Simba about the kings of the past and they're looking at the stars. Uh, they, I was like, oh my god, these like whoever did this was a fucking genius because yes. I was like, that is a perfect placement for that song. <laughs> yes, it, did. it was so good. Oh, I love the Lion King. So. You're expressing, you know, so much love for live music. Would you ever consider going into live music? Uh, I'm I'm unfamiliar with uh, that field, but is that something you're interested in? I mean, I definitely would. I always joked, like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I'm tone deaf. Like, so, like, I saw, like, a, a vocal coach, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're not tone deaf. You just need lessons. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, good, because, like, yeah, like, I love to sing, but like that's the performing thing and i haven't done that in a, such a long time but like i think that musicals oh my gosh like have you guys anything like i don't know like a flash mob or like you know like the show glee like if you just hear a song and you get like amped up or it just makes you feel so good and then to move your body in tandem with that but uh, even if i wasn't performing i think even directing a musical because it, it's it's just so beautiful, like, and it sounds amazing, and it it just emotes something out of you, you know. Like, I feel like it can pull something out of the viewer, and really, really take them on a journey. Yeah, it seems like like musicals that they're able to do that in a much more, I guess, like visceral or or, or potent way. Like you talk about pulling emotions out. Yeah, I don't know how to articulate it, but yeah, like musicals just kind of hit differently than just like raw emotion because they're there on stage. Yeah, and matter of, when in high school, my theater teacher was saying she was quoting somebody, and I don't remember who it was, but the quote was saying that like in plays when a character is singing, it's because they're trying to like regular words just don't express what they're trying to say. So then that's why they have to sing it. And then when they're dancing and doing all of that stuff, it's like you know there's a, a physical energy there that they can't just they can only release it through dance. Like they can't just necessarily run or hit a punching bag or something like that. Mm. So Maybe that's why they keep breaking so out into sense. song on Riverdale. Do they do that on Riverdale? Don't they do that? Or like they just randomly throw in a music episode. <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know. I haven't seen Riverdale. I think I know I thing. should, but <laughs> <laughs> are we going to host a Riverdale watch party? You know what? <laughs> you just might, Jake. You just might. Well, it's weird too because I mean, yeah, I totally like second that that statement. But yeah, it's like, what is it? Family Guy. Like they do musicals a lot because the creator he just grew up like with his family just watching musicals and he's so inspired oh, by musical yeah. theater. So they incorporate that so much. Like that's just what he grew up with. Oh, I thought he was just good at singing, so he just put it in as much as he wanted. Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. It was actually like a legitimate reason for it. Okay, <laughs> cool. So you competed or are competing in, uh, what was it, IFP yeah, competition? The, yeah, the in, in, what is it, Independent Film Phoenix. Yeah, the, the yeah. 240 to Glory Challenge. Yeah, where you had 10 days to uh, write, film, and edit uh, a short film, right? Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about that or is that does it have to be kept under wraps until the the film's out? Oh yeah, no. Uh, we can we can totally talk about it. I oh, think that yeah. uh so David uh Miller, he just asked that like uh no one like show the films like pre um viewing, but yeah, we can 
it was so much fun. Like I was talking to uh, Kim Henneke. Uh, she is the director of the, the Worldwide's Worldwide Women's Film Festival. Um, and I helped her with social media uh, for the festival last last year. And I was just talking to her and I was like, I really just want to get more into like filmmaking and, and meeting people. And I want to start out in like more projects. And I really kind of want to like do like more side gigs and how do I get better involved? And she kind of recommended multiple like Facebook groups. And she was like, Hey, like I know Facebook, you know, you always want to be careful with the groups that you add or you people you communicate with, but there's a lot of things in Arizona and here are the groups that you can, you know, try to get yourself connected to online. And then uh, I added myself and then they, they added me or friended me. Uh, and then I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw this, you know, advertisement for the IFP Phoenix. And then it, I went on the website and I just couldn't stop reading about the film challenge. And then I was like, I talked to Chris from Melinda's, uh, another alumni from ASU, uh, my producer. And I, and I was like, Hey, I, I think, I think we can do this. Like it starts in September and like we can, you know, kind of get everybody together. He's like, have you ever done a film challenge before? And I was like, no, but this <laughs> this will be the first one. <laughs> like, yeah, you gotta start sometime. Yeah. yeah, and he, I think he did uh, one or two. And he's like, oh no, he's like they'll they'll be really fun. But he knows like how like planned and scheduled I am. He's like, mm. you got to be like more improv on these things. And I was like, yeah, mm. I can be I can be more go with the flow. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um. So uh, I put my name down as as the lead, and then our group name is is technically. Uh, video vixens uh okay. we just wanted a Sorry. funny team name so mm-hmm. we were like we'll do that uh and then we went to we got um different people from asu daniel kim and julie sajalis and uh, our wonderful actors uh, jessica lynn stevens and uh, ben uh, guan as well uh that we met from another um set but they killed it and uh we were assigned either group A or B, we kind of picked, and then we picked group B. So our prop that we had to use was a video game controller. And then uh, our added challenge was some extra lines of dialogue that had to be incorporated in the script. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chris and I, after getting everybody together, giving everybody like the dates, we're like, okay, we could film this weekend or we could film that weekend. So we all kind of just told everyone like, hey, we're gonna film this weekend. That way we have, you know, two days, well, technically a day and a half to write. Actors will have a day to rehearse. Uh, We'll have one day to film. And then the editor will have like five days to edit Uh, or however that worked out with like it opening on like a Thursday evening. And then uh, we had to submit films like Sunday at a certain time. So we try to divvy it up between all departments to give everyone, you know, ample, ample time. But uh, we, Christopher and I, we ended up uh, writing just like a three-page script about um, a young woman wanting to compete in a video game tournament and her older brother being very hesitant about her decision uh, just because uh, in her experience of being a female gamer, she's ex- she's uh, un- encountered a lot of cyberbullying. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of that uh, conflict uh, and the passion that she carries through to to overcome and try to get her her own sibling to root for her, uh, even though that there's a chance that you know she's going to get bullied again, or it's just harder for her to to relive uh, the the conflict she experienced before. But yeah, it was a lot a lot of fun to make. It was super super fun. I actually wanted to ask um, if you found the time constraints to be kind of uh, fueling creatively. Like, did that kind of boost your energy or was that just a lingering constraint the whole time? I think that in the beginning, it was a lingering constraint just because uh, Chris and I were kind of going back and forth between ideas. We're like, okay, we could do this. Like, we know that we have, you know, a male and female actor to work with. Uh, and we could they could be siblings. They could be lovers. They could be exes. Like, what, what do we want the relationship to be? And then we decided on siblings and then the story kind of morphed itself out. And then um, just going back to like the prop that we had, that was really, really helpful to like help that creativity, Mm -hmm. like energy flow throughout. But then we kind of gave ourselves like a mental note. Okay, we want to give the actors 
at least a day with it. Um, so that that was like the time constraint. I was like, oh my god, I don't want to let these actors down. Like, I know it's like, and we told them like, hey, we don't expect you to be off book. But by the time we got to set, they were because we condensed the script so much to just three pages. Mm -hmm. And uh, we even asked the coordinator, like, is there, um, we know the maximum is uh, six minutes or less. Is there a minimum? And he actually said, he's like, no, if you can tell us a story in 10 seconds, like that, that's good enough for us. And we were like, (laughs) whoa, okay. So it was, yeah, it was difficult, but it was, it was, it was helpful creatively with like the prop and the lines that we had. So it was fun. So with such a fast production, did you learn anything? Were you able to uh, streamline any processes that in the past had taken more time or was it really just uh, a fun exercise in your filmmaking, you know, skill? So I think that I definitely, it, it definitely like, was like a good kickback to reality. Like I know that like the little things um, that like I thought were important, like I was like, wow, like these are super important. Like I had like a a nice like jolt of like, or like a shot of like, hey, don't forget these key things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that, that that really helped me like not get rusty, but then it also was like, you know, it should be fun. But before filming, I was like, Oh God, like, I don't know if this is going to work. Like, you know, I'm, 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 I told the actors they don't have to be off book, but I was like, it, it should be improv. It should, you know, it's all right to, you know, kind of gel this and morph this a little bit. But uh, even, you know, having the actors, like finding them a space to rehearse and having a sit down and talk about character, you know, getting them coffee and donuts and making them feel like super comfortable, super safe, like, I was like, that stuff is super important, you know, oh, yeah. and it, it seems it seems so mundane and like elementary. It's like, yeah, like you have to take care of your actors. But it's like, like I was like, man, I have to show up like I have to like mentally, emotionally, like because I think because I was the one who was like kind of like, oh, let's let's open this box. Like mm. it, it taught me like I really got to commit because now I'm like really indebted to show up for everyone like who volunteered their time and energy and, you know, stuff like that. So it was a really good like like I don't want to say wake up call but because I was rusty for a little bit um and it was a lot of fun but yeah like I really um had to make sure like I didn't have I didn't I couldn't let anything get in the way like not the anxiety not like the fact of like oh it's improv and I don't know what how it's gonna go down but it's got it's gotta it's gotta go down and we're gonna have fun and uh it, it was a really good uh flexing of the muscles again yeah wow <laughs> kind of make me jealous now I want to do one of those <laughs> Oh my gosh, you should. They're so much fun. I'm like, I'm, I'm always like checking the page now. Like, oh, is there more? And like, what other groups are doing this? And yeah, are they very common? I was like looking on the website, and yeah, they do. Like, I don't know if it's like monthly challenges or quarterly challenges, but they've they have like past winners up on the website, and uh, it's it's really really cool. They have like uh, workshops or uh, like uh, filmmaker talks where you can go and like listen to you know working filmmakers in the valley and like talking about their projects or i know everyone too is talking about like the new you know tax incentives that are that are happening and um some stuff is educational or some stuff is more of like just like networking things so yeah i highly check it out they're they're a really good group and this is uh ifp international filmmakers of phoenix yeah it's uh it's the ifp phoenix it's the independent film phoenix independent film phoenix Mm-hmm. I'm just going to write that down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was my first time working with them. And yeah, it was, I mean, the the coordinator, David Miller, uh, he was so helpful too. He's like, if you guys have questions, you know, just email me, you know, don't be afraid to ask me questions. And, you know, he was like, even if someone misses like the deadline to submit, like we'll, we'll still show it. But, you know, just to be eligible for things, you really have to make sure you get us things on time. Oh. Um, he was like, give yourself, you know, at least, you know, two hours to, to export or mm. depending on how long something is like, mm. he's like, <laughs> I can't tell you how many times people have run into hiccups, like the day of submission. And yeah, he was he's a really cool guy. That's wow. what's up. Yeah. We got to get on that one, Jake. Yeah. No, honestly. Yeah. If you guys do something, hit me up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he already know. He already know. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kind of, kind of going back to, oh, snap, you know, we saw that on, random stuff entertainment and we were kind of wondering like um 
how did the relationship between you and Random Stuff Entertainment begin? Like, do you still work with them? Um, was this, is this your uh, company? Or Oh, uh, so Random Stuff Entertainment, um, I believe it's actually uh, still led by Keegan Luther. Um, mm. He's also a fellow uh, ASU alum. And then uh, Moses uh, as well. I think that they co-created it together wow. or they were trying to come up with like um like a company just to start out with to like highlight like um local films and things like that um i know that moses kind of goes back and forth between like here and cali uh but i believe keegan uh is still based in in arizona and uh he's he's really good he comes from like theater background too and then i know that uh he's he's got his film world and then his theater world. Uh, but yeah, they, they were saying that they wanted to kind of highlight more, more films. And if, and then we were approached if, if they could show oh, snap and I was like honored, I was like, yeah, like that's, that sounds amazing. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm so stoked. Like let's, let's have it up. And then, uh, yeah, I just kind of took it from there, but it was really cool of them to just, you know, have it and highlight it. And, uh, it, it, it is very helpful, like just networking with everyone and, um yeah it worked out from there yeah that's really yeah, cool good. yeah really really good i have a preparation question because uh you had mentioned um or you had alluded that you're very organized when it comes to scheduling and planning how deep into planning do you go uh with filmmaking i i tried to be like really organized early on it wasn't until i was a first ad on capstones <laughs> that I was like, oh my gosh, look at this spreadsheet or look at this call sheet. That looks so cool. <laughs> like, I was like, I like doing this and I can highlight this and I can, I was like, wow. And then I, I always use the same template from one of our instructors, Andre Torres, but we use it in our capstone. I was like, I'm going to steal this. But I learned so much just by like being the first ad and it really forced me to help keep time management and think about you know okay can actors be blocking with the director while the dp is setting up or what is everyone doing or how long would this take um can we push things back or are we fighting against the daylight are we indoor mm -hmm. like so i think that 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 um ex those experiences really helped in my prep so uh carried over um, but I think that's where I really got like super like, oh, this needs to look like this or, uh, you know, things like that with that work. But I try not to, to be like, so like rigid and organized. Like I, I understand like things happen, but I think when I feel like more organized, like I feel like more confident cause I've, I've shown up to things and I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going on. And that uncertainty, like flares up the anxiety of like i don't know what's going on mm, yeah. right right in mm -hmm. in my personal experience yeah it's kind of been uh you have to find a balance between uh being organized but also like allowing things to happen and allowing yourself to be flexible yeah being yeah. able to roll with it yeah because mm -hmm. um a couple years ago during the pandemic uh, i tried to make a short film with uh Nick here and some of my other friends and it was at a location about an hour away from everybody and I had storyboarded out the entire short film and when we got there uh, a lot of what I had storyboarded wasn't like possible or it wasn't giving me the effect I wanted and because I really hadn't planned for anything else uh, that whole short film kind of it just started to stall until uh, one of our members got COVID and basically kind of just threw the whole thing out. We never finished it. Um, I still have the storyboards and the script. Um, but yeah, no, like we have a couple projects now that are storyboarded and I just feel like they're there for reference. They're not there as the answer. Mm -hmm. They're not there like as concretely what you're going to do. I like that though. There, there is like like a reference, not the answer. Like that, and I've always thought that too. Like, there's not one way to do something. Otherwise, we'd all be screwed. Like, can you imagine? Like, <laughs> oh, gosh, yeah. If there was like one way to do something, I'm like, man. But yeah, like 
And I mean, they even go back to that in theater, like toy thing. Like they would tell us, like you have to think on your feet, mm. like so that little like you know toy. If you have to like figure it out, you got to think on your feet. And you know, like no, I definitely agree with that. But I think that that's great that you have those like you know in the back of your mind, or like you have those like images or stories like mm. bopping around. Because some days I'm like, oh man, it's like dry up there. Like I'm just oh, yeah. like, oh my gosh, yeah. uh, like <laughs> like where where are all my ideas or like inspirations? Like I'm waiting for something to just bam hit me, and I'm like, man, like I just can't wait for it. I just have to think about little things mm -hmm. and then keep them and then maybe pair them together yeah. or yeah like someone has this idea or someone has the camera or someone needs this finished or yeah like it, it is helpful like when you're like you know in a team and yeah i i like like i applaud like all the filmmakers because it is it is so difficult like just running and gunning and like trying to make this art Mm -hmm. because it's it, it's so beautiful and it could be so cool but yeah it, it is like it is intense mm -hmm. like i feel like you really need to have innate talent to run and gun and make something cohesive and beautiful because we we run and gun before <laughs> um but we have not made anything beautiful from that i mean that that last video we did we kind of run and no. gun that one. I, I, yeah, think, no. I think it's solid i think it's pretty beautiful we minimum nine out of ten if if i do say so myself i think we made a 59 second <laughs> short over the weekend uh with oh no my god a 59 second <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we really try to push the boundaries over here at uh at hunting vision the boundaries of 60 seconds <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but you know what though like if it suits the story i had E told me that she's like, you know, if it if it fits the story, keep it. If it doesn't, like throw it out. So I'm sure whatever, you know, it was, if it suited the story, I bet it's amazing. And that that's one thing about about like films and short films and maybe even some audience members to a certain extent. Like there might be a, a short film and you watch it and it's like, wow, this is like this is perfect. The story is perfect. The the timing of it is perfect. If it was any shorter, you know, the story wouldn't be as good. If it was any longer, it would just feel like you're dragging it out. Because I've shown uh, a short film that, that Jake and I have worked on. I've shown it to a few different people and some, one of them, uh, some of them are like, oh, wow, that needs to be a feature. But then he says that about every single short film that, that he sees. And it's like, uh, no, if, if it was a feature, the story, it just wouldn't be as good. It yeah. wouldn't be as impactful, mm -hmm. you know, so... Mm. So, yeah. that's that is cool yeah it's like people are like oh you know your kid's so great you should have more and you're like no <laughs> like i have this is my child and i'm happy yeah. <laughs> or you're like yeah i want to you know but mm -hmm. that's so cool yeah um the and specifically this last one that we were referencing the story quote unquote it was really just a joke <laughs> that me and nick had set like a one-liner and uh we were like oh we let's just film that yeah <laughs> and so we took a couple hours on saturday and like ah, going back to the run and gun thing like yes but no because mm -hmm. like w w when i think run and gun i think you get a camera and you have no idea what you're gonna film with it you know mm -hmm. um but we at least had a direction to go in and like uh, a setup um, yeah, and also like more or less, whenever like we're working on a film, like it seems like we're kind of just almost always on the same page. I feel like that makes it a little bit easier. Like Jake and I, we've known each other since like first grade. So, yeah. oh my god, yeah, <laughs> it's been eighteen years. Wow, man, yeah. we've known each other for a legal amount of time. I know that's, that's <laughs> insane to think about sometimes, but but yeah, it's like we, you know we we spend a lot a lot of time together, and so a lot of our ideas, a lot of those kind of brainwave frequencies i guess are just you know they're on the same page basically so yeah. it's easy for us to be like oh you know here, here's a joke idea that yeah I have. same okay, sense of humor mm -hmm. yeah same sense of story well actually you're you're kind of more um I, we were talking about this the other day nick prefers not happy endings and i actually really like happy endings well i mean i i like i don't necessarily prefer not not happy endings but i feel like a lot of the times <laughs> they're yeah. they're just they're, they're more impactful like they yeah. they leave you like oh wow that's that's crazy you know and i like trying to just you know do things a little bit differently sometimes yo but like i i feel the same way too because um 
my fiance Brent and I, we talk about this. It's like, oh, it could end happy. And I'm like, no, it, it has to end that way. It's got to have <laughs> like, because I'm like, then because if it's all happy, then like the audience is just experiencing like happiness. But if if they at the, they went through this journey and they're so upset, to me, that's like the point. Like you're supposed to feel like that was like an injustice or that was like so sad or it's like it's a, like supposed to make you feel like, oh, my gosh, like you know, that, that emotion again, that resonation. But I think that, that, yeah, if you guys like prefer that or you have that different styles, I was going to say, if you guys have known each other for 18 years, that's a lot of trust too. That's really good to have trust in your fellow artist or collaborator or partner. Like, so that is really, really cool. Yeah. That's a good point. Actually. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I never looked at it that way. Actually. I do want to side note, um, Two things. Uh, you you answer the question I was going to ask you <laughs> about oh. the, the sad, happy endings. And also when you were describing that, Nick was just smiling and nodding the whole time. <laughs> I mean, because like sometimes unhappy endings, like it's just, it's perfect. If, it, if de- Depending on how the story goes, if, if it ends up being happy, then it might just be kind of like, uh, it, it might just seem too easy sometimes also. As I say, yeah. it falls into the category of it's predictable. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Danielle, that's what I'm trying to tell him. <laughs> but but to caveat, it's like, like, you know, if it's a rom-com, I'm like, oh my God, that's so good they ended up together. <laughs> or like, I knew it. I knew she liked him. Oh, yeah. Or it's like, so some of that stuff is so satisfying. It's like, oh, finally they got together, or, you know. As a filmmaker, what is the legacy, I guess, that you would want all of your films to have and all mm. of your accomplishments and and things like that what what impact do you want to do you want to leave on the world with all of your works oh man very philosophical that is a re- i would say that's a really good question <laughs> that's what i do <laughs> <laughs> um i think that film should like really transport you like i remember like watching musicals when i was younger or like like as kids going to the movie theater like it was like going to the movie theater, like it was such a big deal. And, you know, whether we were like smuggling in, you know, snacks or something or like just going with my mom, but it was just like, it was such an event. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, just holding like that responsibility, like to, I don't want to say like, I mean, you do, you do have a responsibility socially, I think, when you make any film. I, a, a professor said this to me, it was Jason Scott, and it was uh, like a sex and violence in uh, film course. Yeah. And I never thought about it this way, but he was like, you know, you should never like glorify violence, or if you do glorify it, why? Hmm. Um, and, you know, whether you are doing something intentionally and, or unintentionally, like it, it should be intentional, it should never be unintentional. Um, but I think that films that will empower you or, you know, make you feel inspired or, you know, transport you to like uh, a very, you know, cool feeling or place or like an escape. I think that those are the things that I would want to focus on. Um, I have seen like certain documentaries that like really inspire or like make me sad but i think like films for like social change are really powerful as well i've never done anything like that but uh, i think that that would be an interesting like challenge uh but just to tell stories that i think that really should be told or characters that i think that people can connect with uh, i think that those are the things that that i would uh ho- hope to to have people see or you know positive emotions for people to feel and, and things like that okay. Wow. okay yeah no i like that answer i went through my all my questions if you've gone through all of your questions we can go ahead and start winding down yeah i went, I went through all of mine as well um unless were there any other maybe closing remarks that that you had danielle or if you have any questions for us oh yeah we, we love Ooh. answering questions <laughs> i mean i was gonna say like like how'd you guys meet like i but i know you've you said you met like in like first grade or grade school like 18 Ooh. years that's crazy yeah no i actually have a story for that but it's probably not podcast <laughs> uh <laughs> material but yeah no we met in first grade at recess through a mutual friend who is still our mutual friend and That's what, is in this video we filmed on saturday i want to i kind of oh want to give gosh. him a shout out but i know how he kind of is about like social media stuff like that oh 
His name's Addison. We can just okay. say that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. And yeah, he's he's a really great guy. He really creative as well, um, especially musically, you know. But mm. uh, yeah, mutual friend. I I met him in kindergarten, and then he introduced me to Jake at recess, and then we Loki have just kind of been like like the 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 trio or something. Basically, like that. yeah. Did you guys ever? F- think because i know like you know you have friends or like you know you have common interest or likes and dislike did you guys ever picture that you would both be like artists in film or filmmaker like together to like find that passion together did you think that or had like a hunch that one would like like did you guys ever feel like that would fall into like the lap like that same world okay so i have a really windy answer to this um because like yes but with the asterisk yeah. asterisk <laughs> after it, because um, when I was young, pretty much through all of elementary, I wanted to be a writer. And Addison, the the mutual friend between Nick and I, he loved movies at a young age, and I liked movies, but I I wasn't like a, a movie guy. I wasn't a movie guy until like my latter years of high school. Um, I'd always watched them, but I never really. I, I didn't know actors' names. I didn't know directors' names. But uh, in yeah, in elementary school, Addison and I and another friend who uh, moved away in elementary school, we had <laughs> we had said uh, I would write the movies. Addison would make the movies, and the the third dude would do something else. Um, but I don't think Nick and I had any like talks about making movies until till college till college right? yeah oh yeah. my gosh so it's like oh wow that's and, cool and i didn't even really know i wanted to be a director until <laughs> this year really because i've been an editor since 2016 um and i thought that's what i wanted to do and i got a full-time job editing and it turns out that's not what i want to do <laughs> um and we've just been making all these short films and i just really like being in the director's chair. So, yeah, that's the asterisk for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, though. It's very evolutionary because, yeah, like, I thought that, you know, theater, like, because first it was, like, psychology, and then I was like, oh, no, theater, that's what I really oh. like. And it's like, oh, well, film, I really like that, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's not until you get, you know, your foot in, or like yeah. you said, like, until you, like, do it, and exactly. you're like, oh, I do like that. Or, no, I hate that, you know? Because, Nick, you because you were writing as well like that's primarily like your passion as well or have you transitioned more into directing or uh no mostly still mostly writing i've kind of accidentally transitioned into acting a little bit every yeah. now and then what? And I'm, I'm, every film we do <laughs> i'm always trying to like get out of it or like talk to one of my friends like hey yo bro uh i just wrote this part for a script you're perfect for it and then it'll be like oh, i'm not an actor bro so then i might have to end up mm-hmm. acting in that which it's not a bad thing i'm just i mean you know i'm like a little shy i'm kind of quiet i prefer to be behind the camera and just craft mm-hmm. the story put it out there into the universe and yeah. get started on the next one i always say uh me and nick we act uh for necessity yeah <laughs> not because we want to yeah. <laughs> um but nick when you were younger did you did you think you were going to be a filmmaker or wh- what was your aspirations i i always wanted to be involved in film somehow because like as a kid it was basically like the whole family we all lived in like the the one single story house and my grandmother she she likes movies too so she would always play like the same movie all day every day and you know as a little kid you're watching that and so it's like oh wow and I just I got really like fascinated by the notion of like you create a story if you create a story you're basically creating a whole new reality and I would find myself kind of getting lost in in movies and and stories and stuff like that and like even just just storytelling in general always um always interested me and like if I was like a little kid and maybe I, I say something I'm kind of stretching the truth a little bit my mom would always say like she wouldn't say like don't lie she would say stop telling stories so maybe that's partially the reason why I got kind of kind of just stuck in my head but yeah I, and at first I wanted to be an actor because again as a little kid actors that's the only thing you really see in movies but whenever I talked about movies my parents and, and my grandma would say you know you sound more like a director writer producer kind of kind of kind of person so then like in junior high high school I was trying to think more like a director and I was always kind of coming up with 
my own stories and you know i, I was I'm, I'm a comic book dork so as a kid it was always like the um i made up my own superheroes and and the storylines for those characters and i had all the drawings oh and everything gosh. like that and then um yeah around college jake and addison they had started a youtube channel <laughs> and they they brought me on and it was like oh wow, wow. so we were oh, we were doing that for a little bit and the dark ages <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> we're doing that for a little bit, having having a lot of fun with it, and it learning was a lot, learning a lot, and it was really exciting. And I was always kind of like sweating around the idea, like, "Yo, let's try to take this to the next level at some point. Let's, you know, we let's start off as a YouTube channel and then just get consistent with with the videos, and then move up to like short films, and then submit those to festivals, and then from there, hopefully, build our own like production company and we're a lot closer to that right now i feel which is really exciting oh dang i bumped the table but it's it's really exciting and um and yeah you know wow i lost my train of thought but yeah so we were doing it's like very the, exciting yeah it's, it's very, so very cool. exciting <laughs> no yeah. but it's like that's like that's like the origin story and i feel like so many of us connect with that like yeah it's a, movies are so sentimental like what we watch with our families mm. or like oh, yeah. you know oh i remember this came on tv and we all sat you know on the on the couch or it's like my mom showed me this or you know what i mean so mm -hmm. it's like um it's funny because yeah i like at, like at a very young age like i i still have all my comic books that i collected and like you know dc and marvel and like all that fun stuff but it's like oh, yeah, yeah there's stories around us all the time like it's in so many from literature and comic books or graphic novels and it's like it's just you know it's so cool it's just stories everywhere so i gotta i, I gotta ask just because you brought it up who, who are your favorite dc and marvel <laughs> characters and why so i know this is like the basic answer i don't want to be basic but uh, DC, I love Superman. Yeah, oh, he's the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's my favorite character we, too. <laughs> oh my god, I remember like watching this really old uh, Superman TV show with. Oh my god, it's the it's the guy who played. He would do the a uh, Kent or the Dent. I'm, I'm terrible. I don't remember his name, but Harvey we would Dent. watch it on. No, it was uh he was the voice, the narrator for Ripley's Believe It or Not. Oh, 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 oh. Um, like the I don't know why I'm forgetting his name, but I watched Dean him Kane. all the time. Yes, Dean <laughs> Kane, thank you. Of course. I of was course. like, I know I know Superman is Clark Kent, that's not who I'm talking about. <laughs> but um I would watch that like before school and like, you know, get all the comic books and but I mean yeah, I just I don't know. And then Smallville, Smallville was so big in my house oh, with Tom yes. Welling. It was so good. You're making Nick and so happy over here. <laughs> That's the show. I, I have the whole uh, series on top of the movie shelf right here. If, yeah, oh if we had God. a camera, we would turn it. You'd see like the whole shrine right now. Oh, my God. That's awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, like I, I, I haven't seen the end of Smallville, though, because I didn't want it to end. Like I'm one of those mm. people like I can't watch the end of something because I'm like, ah, I got to catch up. <laughs> but I don't want it to end. I feel um, you. And it, then... it was a painful ending, but a good one yeah. for the show. Oh, no. <laughs> No. Or it was it was painful to see it, and that, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I gotcha. And I mean, Marvel. Um, who is my favorite? There's a lot in Marvel. I think that are pretty cool. I think just X Men in general. Like, and again, like people making those superhero movies and like you know pioneering like those stories like really early on, or like the evolutions of you know where Batman was you know, versus, you know, Christopher Nolan's Batman. Like, those are mm. so cool, having yeah. different renditions and stuff like that. Are there any uh, superhero movies or comic stories that have inspired, like, your story writing? That's a good question. <laughs> um, <Thank you>. <laughs> <laughs> my mom loves Wonder Woman. Like, almost every birthday or Christmas, like, someone gets her, like, a Wonder Woman present. Mm -hmm. um and she she's like old school she would watch the tv shows with linda carter wow, yeah uh and she she just loves wonder woman um and i've always you know seen her like as a wonder woman because you know she's my, she's my mom like she's yeah. you know single parent and just an amazing hardworking and talented woman um so i think that you know looking to her and then in tandem with being surrounded by wonder woman like all my life i think that that's like a good like symbol is like female empowerment or you know the female stories that that i've you know thought about or things like that but yeah i would say wonder woman for sure 
Okay, okay. Okay. That's really cool. So your 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 mom enjoys watching like comic book movies and and comic book based media with you? Yeah, like my wow. my brother growing up like he he loved like all the Spider-Mans like and it mm. started with like Tobey Maguire like we would watch things like we would watch the movie all the time oh, yeah. or <laughs> you know when the Incredibles came out it was Incredibles or like he's a Pixar kid, he's a Marvel kid, he's a DC kid like so we're Good there kid. for all of it and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's really cool, and and even like basic stuff, like I don't know, like Scooby Doo or like Dexter's Laboratory, like all those or Samurai Jack, like all those cool, oh, you know, yeah. cartoons, all the good Cartoon Network stuff, you know. Mm, yeah, so, the good shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't do it like that anymore. I would they say don't. kids today, they like they they're missing out. Yeah, yeah. they just don't understand. They, they don't get it, man. <laughs> they don't get it. I'm a little jealous because like my mom, my dad, and. Even like my sisters, they're like, we don't give a fuck about that comic book stuff. It's, it's <laughs> honestly, right. it's just me and my older brother, and like my girlfriend and his wife. They're kind of like, oh, are you guys like still watching Batman versus Superman: The Ultimate Edition? <laughs> We're like, uh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That's so. But it's like, I mean, again, like what kids look up to that, and it's just at the at the base of it. I think at the root of it is just be a good person, and like yeah. that is the ultimate. You know what I mean? Like it's finding power in yourself or like power in other people. Like there's a lot of like, I think underrated things and like, those are good themes. Those are good messages for kids to look at. And it's super satisfying as an adult too, to like watch things, you know, it really is. Yeah. It's like by whatever means find the power to combat evil or do the right thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Even Superman said that in, let's see, justice league crisis on tour. It's like, there was, he this said that, Mm -hmm. It was this crazy like threat and the it was like an alternate reality and it was an evil version of the Justice League and they were kind of like taking over that taking over America and the president was like, you know, we can't fight them and da 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 da. And Superman was talking to this alternate reality president, like, I fight guys that are bigger and stronger than me all the time because it's it's the right thing to do. Mm. You know, so you mm -hmm. can't let fear stop you from doing what you gotta do, right? You know, and it's like it's crazy to hear Superman say that because he's so powerful. So it's like, dang. So you're standing up to people that are yeah. more powerful than you. And he's he has like an almost infinite amount of power. Mm -hmm. So that's crazy to think about. Yeah, I think I think Superman's underrated too because it's like, yeah, it's like my fiance is like, oh, Superman, like, you know, he's Superman. Like he can literally do whatever. And it's like, but no, like he actually like has a lot of like uh, conflict with the inner self, like his duality of Clark Kent. And Superman, like that whole theme of identity. But a lot of superheroes, you know, do that too. So that's, that's a constant tread. Yeah, Superman is really slept on. And the thing, like, I, I, I see where people come from. Like, oh, he's too powerful. So the um, the stories aren't as interesting. But the best Superman stories are the ones where he's challenged emotionally. You yeah. know, like there's, you know, if he's, you know, like you said, like he's still trying to figure himself out. Or like maybe he's dealing with someone that just nobody else on the planet can really relate to but he still is like you know i have to put on my cape and do what i gotta do for sure no i i love that i i, I can't believe nick i never knew this about you i know how has this never come <laughs> up oh my gosh <laughs> we were we were petrified at, at asu i think of like oh my god this is due <laughs> like, oh yeah we we're all stressing <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, Nick is sweating over here. <laughs> He's you know so what? happy. <laughs> it's hot. I got a long sleeve shirt on right now. Yeah, you're dressed for the snow right now. <laughs> it's 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 really cold in the office, so I got to wear like jackets and stuff. <laughs> well, that's how you know you're an Arizona kid. Like we were walking the dogs yesterday, and I was like, God, it's it's chilly. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's like 80 degrees, and I'm like, you're from here, right? Like it's cold. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, Arizona. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Oh yeah, the only uh, the only other thing too, like a little small plug. So yeah, the Peoria Film Festival. It is October fifteenth on a Saturday at like seven twenty at the Harkins Arrowhead, and uh, the film uh, the title of the film is Odd Girl Out. Uh, so it'll be really cool to see it on the big screen. And yeah, there's like tickets on sale, and we have a trailer up on like social media and stuff. And yeah, I hope you guys can check it out or spread the word too. Yeah, no, oh, yes, and that is a good plug. That is a good thing to mention we're gonna include the trailer and the link to the festival in the description as well as a link to oh snap and a link to because you also did a little four minute behind the scenes making of for oh snap um, we're gonna link that video as well in the description so go ahead and click on that if you're interested a lot of good stuff down there awesome that's that is awesome guys thank you so much
Yeah, thank of you. course, of course. Thank you so much for, for joining us on this episode of Hey Cannon today. Great hearing from you. Amazing filmmaker, amazing person to know. Excited for your next films. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. Thank you guys so much. This was so amazing talking to you both. Uh, I, again, yeah, I can't thank you enough. All right. Thank yeah. you. And goodbye, everybody. <laughs>